नदी से लाते थे हम पानी उधर नदी से लाते थे उधर दूर से पानी लाते थे पहले इधर दूर नदी से लाते थे पानी मिट्टी के खड़े होते थे अब तो हम हम ये पीतल का गगरी रखे हैं नहीं तो मिट्टी के होते थे घर आने तो ये भी फिसल जाता था वो पानी भी गया हमारा घर आते आते तो और भी रोने का मन हो जाता था कि दूसरी बार फिर जाना पड़ता था मिट्टी का घड़े लेके चार घड़े सुबह चार या शाम को लाकर भी कुछ नहीं होता था हमारा The last film, Mountains United, Jeff and I went to India and uh, I kind of did audio and helped him direct a little bit and I edited the film. And I was the uh, the director and the cinematographer and the two of us worked on it uh, pretty closely. But uh, between the two of us and Matt Delorme, who was featured in the film, it was sort of the three of us that had to kind of juggle all of the jobs. I would say that the cinematography and the photography was excellent throughout the entire film. Um, I really liked how this documentary, normally when you see documentaries on India, it's focused more about um, kind of the negative aspects of the country or the larger cities. So it's refreshing to see that uh, you focus more on a smaller community and it wasn't just about the issues or potential issues that have come from India, but it was also about solutions that have happened. And I really liked how you focused on uh, the importance of women in, this, in these communities because often that's overlooked. Uh, so yeah, I just really um, I was just curious where all the men were. Also, I love that you focus on the women, but I, I, you just, you, I, it's like you, you very, you very good at just not, like not filming. It's like a single man almost really yeah, yeah. to the time. Yeah, to be honest, there weren't a lot of men in the communities. A lot of them had left uh, when they were younger because there was no schooling at that point, and then they would go to the city because that was the only place that you could get work because there's really no steady jobs in these communities. They're really small villages where you kind of grow your own food and you're kind of. On your own a lot, so they a lot of them would leave, and they talked about that, how hard that was uh, when they would leave, and they their, their children would go, and their husbands would go to work, and it's like a day trip to get anywhere that is kind of civilization, as we would say. Yeah, we so. found ourselves asking the same question: Where are all the men? And uh, there's a few in the film, but I mean, for the most part, I mean, what happens is the, is the case, and there are a few people that do still live in the communities, uh, but yeah. Getting out of there is really difficult. It's a really isolated mountain community. Um, it says Raniket as the title card for where we were, um, but the city, like the actual town of Raniket, is still probably 40 minutes from where we stayed. And a lot of the time, the only transportation you have is to walk. So you can't it, realistically walk back and forth to a high paying job. So people have to move quite far away, semi permanently, in order to be able to send money back. And it's not until recently where these women have started to be able to generate income for themselves that there are now viable careers there. So who knows? I mean, maybe the next generation or two generations from now, there'll be more men in these villages. Has grassroots expanded beyond the one village? So we focused mainly on that village because that's, um, that's where they've done the most work, where they've been working the longest. But uh, so the state that's in Uttarakhand, which is like the north end of India, but now they work in uh, Uttar Pradesh and also they're starting to work in Himachal Pradesh. So it's just sort of about uh, about how far they can expand. And one of the goals of the organization is to try and unite not just based on where they live, but based on being other mountain communities, uh, whether that's like in the Andes in South America or elsewhere in India, because a lot of mountain communities have a similar type of uh, struggles and similar type of issues. So they're trying to expand it that way rather than just slowly outwards from where they live. And I, I wanted to know, um, are these um, uh, women kind of acting or are they really happy? That one, when they were really the happiest, I think you could see in the, in the video, is when they were climbing up the mountain to go get, uh, to climb the trees and get the firewood. And I was so surprised by how it was just another day for them and the amount of uh, uplifted spirits um, around there, just like working together and doing it together. They didn't really, there, there weren't struggles to them. It was everyday life and they really made the best of their situation. And, and so they weren't uh, acting the no, 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 no. a happy group of people. Yeah, and that older, the oldest lady who was talking about the, the gods not stopping, and she, I, like her spirit. Yeah, she's laughing. Yeah, it, yeah. So, and they were in this in the middle of a serious drought at that time. They hadn't had rain in a, a, like a significant amount of time. So. Yeah, their, their, their spirits were, were very high. Uh, on that day that Adam was talking about where we went to the firewood, we didn't know any of that was going to happen. So it wasn't even like, go and be happy and chop firewood. It was like, hey, some of the women are going to go get firewood. Do you want to tag along? And we said, sure. And we showed up, and all of them are sitting knitting at the side of the road. And a lot of these women can walk 
and knit and carry a load of firewood in one go. Yeah. And with it's, sandals on. With sandals on, yeah. It is not, they're just not bothered. It's just like that's also their community time when they're together with other women from the village. So it, like, it's a naturally sort of social occasion and everyone, yeah, like, no, it was a pretty organic. I, I really loved how they, I thought they were, I had no comment about, no thought about acting. Um, I, I thought they were truly uh, full, being fulfilled and coming together and working together and as one said, you know, we, we don't even want to look for another job and we, uh, it, it is really incredible that they could do all these things, that, but not surprising, they looked very tough and very sweet and um, yeah, I, 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 I've seen, I think I've seen the Pauls like years ago on TV or something look familiar. I don't know, because something said something about 1998. Uh, I think earlier than that, they moved happened. there in 87, and I think the organization started in 92. Yeah. Yeah, because it, yeah. it was their 25th anniversary. So, uh, but um, very inspiring, beautiful uh, cinematography, and uh, I just, yeah, I hope it spreads. Thanks for doing it. And it was so refreshing to me to see so many women talk in the documentary. I've never, like, it was such a stark difference, and it's funny that the, uh, the person said, where are all the men, right? And we don't ask that when there are just three women amongst, and I think there were three men in, the, in this, and we don't ask that when it's just men talking, right? So that was, I was, my question in fact, where my first question before this was gonna be, was that intentional? But it looks like it was just incidental, right? Like no, it wasn't, they just, wasn't intentional, that was, okay. that was the community. Okay, yeah, so that was really refreshing to, to watch. Um, the second thing was, uh, it was really nice that this grassroots, I mean this organization was helping them as opposed to just throwing money at it. Yeah, that, I mean, it goes right down to their name is the, the only way they knew that uh, people would keep up a well or keep up bathrooms that they had or all these different uh, appropriate technologies was if they felt ownership of it. So I think that one of the prerequisites to getting any help from grassroots is that the community has to pay half or three quarters maybe even of, uh, of any, any undertaking they take, so these wells they make. So they really make sure the community has ownership. And then those guys that were in the infra, uh, infiltration well little part, uh, one of those guys is paid from the community to operate the well. So it's actually like a paying job that the community pays a small sum of money just to upkeep. Uh, and then they have somebody who's actually in charge of it. So all their initiatives are kind of like owned by the community. Umang is owned by all the people, all the artisans who are part of it. They really don't make money off of any of it. It's all going back towards uh, all the initiatives that they've, they've put money into uh, already. And just another note on the women is that we actually didn't speak English to anybody for, except for our, uh, each other and uh, the two the two hosts that we had while we were there. So they didn't. The people don't have telephones there. They maybe had told them like a month ago we were going to come by maybe, uh, but they probably forgot about that. And we would just kind of show up and see who was in the village to talk to us. Well, that, what so, was pre-production like for you guys? And were you asked by gra grassroots to make the film as well? So okay, so the way that works is um, the organization that we did this through is called Photographers Without Borders and. I have to try and tell this really <laughs> compactly, but basically, Photographers Without Borders pairs photographers f with grassroots organizations around the world, like small NGOs that are often one or two people. And the photographer goes, they get to be up close and personal with an issue that is important to them, and the organization in return gets photos that they can use to promote themselves, raise money, recruit, whatever they need to do. So they were an organization that we had slated for that type of partnership. And when we started doing the series of films, um, we thought that they were like a good holistic community initiative. The owners uh, seemed like they knew what, what they were doing, and so we thought they would be really good for a film. So pre-production was a couple of Skype calls, yeah. um, mostly uh, at awkward times because of the time difference, uh, reading as much as we could online, and then a lot of it was just driving around and doing it. The first sort of two to three days of the shoot were sort of pre-production. We had quite a long journey by train and then by car to get to this community from Delhi where we flew into, and so we spent a lot of the time just talking to Kalyan and Anita saying, okay, well, how long have you been here? Who are the success stories? Who's most important? What is the scope of what you're doing? And just sort of asking them as many questions as you can, but 
pre-production in a place like this, you tend to find out the best things once you're there already. Because you arrive in the village and then someone's home and they say, oh, this is the first ever person to get a biogas digester in the entire region and they're still made of stone and it's the old model and so on. And then you go to that person's house and she's using the film. So uh, pre-production there was a bit, but a lot of it was by the skin of our teeth. Um, so just about the people who started Grassroots, could you tell us a bit more about them? Like what inspired them to move to that region? Are they, like, where are they from? Are they... I mean, why did they move there? And I, I know, I know they're from Delhi originally, or certainly Kalyan is. I think Anita is also from yeah. there. And I, I couldn't tell you why, other than they both said that they just really love the mountains. One thing that Anita said was that when they first moved to the mountains, she had never seen them, and she went. She would go for walks every day, but every single morning she gets up and goes to the window and looks because you could see the Himalayas from the window of their house. Like some of those shots, you could see that's like that's the view right from the doorstep of their house. And she still, after living there for 25 years, gets up and looks out at the mountains every day. So there was just like a pull for her. Yeah. I know that they both came from uh, quite privileged uh, backgrounds um, from Delhi, and they both were highly educated. I think one of those they were both environmental lawyers, um, and they kind of were sick of the 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 Delhi their daily lives, I guess, in Delhi, so they wanted to move away and kind of help people in a less superficial way, um, which is kind of why they started that. Um, this is part of a series of films, yeah. but no two films are about the same organization, so there's a huge variety of stories. Some of them are environmental, some of them are social, etc., etc., but I would definitely encourage you, if you like this, one, check out some more photographers.borders.org, and thanks very much for coming. <laughs>